Hey, this is Lisa. And I'm Craig. Welcome, welcome to Conversations to in the South Office. Today we would like to welcome Emily Ironside, Head of Philanthropic Strategies at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, and we would also like to welcome Dylan Turk, the curator for the Architecture at Home exhibit, also at Crystal Bridges. Emily and Dylan, welcome to Airways Freight. Emily, you've been here many times before. You've been to our mud boat picnic. You've enjoyed some of our after hours activities with us. We appreciate you coming back. Dylan, great to have you here for the first time. Uh, we'll spend some time just talking about different involvement that Airways has had with Crystal Bridges uh, and get some excitement built about what's upcoming for you guys for the spring. So, awesome. well, we're excited to be here. Yeah, so excited. Thanks for having us. So, uh, Let's talk a little bit about the current goings on, which is the architectural exhibits that Airways has just done quite a bit of shipping for. Emily, you and I were discussing this earlier about how it's gonna be mostly an outdoor venue. And Dylan, I'll kind of let you chime in on, on what people visiting the museum can look forward to this spring whenever this opens. And go ahead and feel free to give opening dates and any information you want to. Yeah, so uh, the name of the show is Architecture at Home, and um, it will open to the public on June 11th. Um, what we've done is, this is like a four year long project, so I have to start backing up, but about two and a half years ago, we uh, commissioned five architects from all across North America to build prototypes, like actual structures that people can walk in of innovative housing types. So someone is, uh, Levin Betts, for example, is obsessed with timber, and so they used all Arkansas timber and built this entire structure. We were talking earlier about uh, Pablo Palacios Arquitectos out of Mexico City, and they uh, innovative housing system that are essentially these panels that just snap together to build a structure. So guests will be able to walk around, sit down in these houses, feel the way the light falls on you, understand space and, and hope, I hope, that uh, people leave with a more expanded understanding of how we can live. That depending on where you're from or what your family type is, um, that it's not just, you know, what we always think of as like the square with the triangle on top is the shape of the house. It can be circular, it can be uh, zigzag, and um, that materials and new technologies are changing the way we can build um, more sustainably, more uh, affordably, and that can help us feel more at home. Um, and that's kind of what this architecture home thing came from. Is during the whole project, like the architects kind of challenged us. I thought they were going to come back with uh, like really data-driven answers, mm -hmm. and they came back and they said, "Uh-uh, that's not how people live." And so we want you to feel something when you're in it. And so all of these structures really dive deeper into what do you think about. Like I've asked people in our community when we've been doing some engagement with them to kind of prep for the exhibition, what's a memory of home? And if you ask yourself those things, you probably aren't describing the layout of your kitchen. You know, your right, your grandmother. Cool. And yeah, yeah, you know, you're like people say like the smell of my grandmother's cakes when she's making. Uh, you know, all of these things that are really what we think about with the word home, and, and that's what I think people will walk away from. So it's not just a building that has shingles and a driveway and a two-car garage or whatever. It's uh, combining a little bit of artistic vision also with functionality and um, basically just putting together structures that could be used as living quarters that aren't contemporary living quarters which kind of in my mind draws me back to Emily you and I were talking about this earlier one of the original projects I think the original project that Airways did transporting freight for Crystal Bridges which was Global Citizen which also was architectural related but on a different scope had more to do with mass housing. Mm -hmm. You're right. Containerized housing is what I would call that. Is that, is that accurate? That is, and that was in 2014, believe it or not. So we have been working at Airways Freight now for over eight years. Dylan, actually, was with us at the museum yeah. for that. Was that one That was like your my first thing project? I did there, so it's really weird, actually. <laughs> yes. It started there, and now we're here. Yes. Yeah, and that was so cool. I mean, with Moshe Softy, and now we're doing a major expansion with Softy's firm, and so it really is kind of charting our relationship with y'all is really charting kind of the growth of the museum and where we were and where we're going, and so it's it's pretty cool. Not to go off on a tangent, but touch a base, touch base just a little bit on that expansion you guys have coming up because it is the Softy firm 
they're designing it and doing the construction and what's the time frame of that and what what scope is it as far as the expansion? Yeah, it's exciting. It will increase our gallery size by 50%. Um, significantly increase the footprint of our classrooms and our art making spaces for all of the children's programs and art classes we teach. Uh, it will be all along our north side of the property. It will have also expansive outdoor areas for gatherings and events and weddings and concerts. Um, it's amazing. It's something that uh, I, I laugh because if you are familiar at all with Crystal Bridges, you know that things that we dream of in the future suddenly become reality now. And so this expansion was our 25 year plan and uh, 25 years really became Let's do this right now, yeah. wait. Uh, because certainly we've seen a great success in our visitors each year since we've opened. With the pandemic aside, we've had an increase in attendance in 2019. We had 750,000 visitors. That's which is great. Crazy. It's, um, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, you know, the, the MSA for this region is only just over 500,000. So that's more people visiting than live in Northwest Arkansas. Right. Uh, and so we know that the the need is there. We're also rethinking uh, how we acquire new works for the collection and all of the different stories we tell through that art. Art is the window through which we believe people explore themselves, explore their history, and can inform our futures. And so we're looking at collecting more contemporary art. Often that's really large scale. We also put a stake in the ground and we are collecting more craft art. So Chihuly, um, the exhibition we had in 2017 also shipped by Airways Freight. A uh, great example of how an artist has mastered a material, the glass material, and so craft is, is looking at the ways in which artists have mastered their materials, and often that work is larger scale as well. And we're also weaving in more indigenous works uh, through the collection, and so the need for the expansion uh, really has ramped up with the need for us and the hunger for us to tell even more stories about who we are, where we've come from, and where we're going through art, and we'll be able to do all of that and more with this expanded building. Airways has been involved uh, with Crystal Bridges on a number of projects since we started in 2014. You mentioned Chihuly, which is one of the more interesting things. I do remember when those truck, the trucks arrived in the parking lot, it was sprinkling that day, and came from Washington, Tacoma. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, I hope when we open up these trailer doors, everything is in pristine condition, because I haven't seen this right since it loaded, and it was, and you could tell by the way, the artist had packaged each of those pieces that those were his babies. Yes. Because there wasn't a reused box anywhere to be seen. Everything was just crisp and clean and packaged in a very efficient, very safe manner. Yeah, you're right, Craig. And that day I remember clearly because it was unplanned, totally serendipitous, that Bale, Cottle, and Ken Center happened to be joining Alice Walton for lunch that day, not scheduled around the shipment arriving. It did arrive while they were with us. You were there, ready and waiting for the shipment. And we meandered by and we realized, oh my goodness, this is the glass, this is it. So we were able to go and check it out. Often, you know, whenever we're loading, art in or out of the museum. It's a very secure area. You know, I don't often have the privilege of being up there to see it unloaded, but on this day with with the group we had, we were able to peek inside and all of us, I think, held our breath a bit. As we, a bit just as a matter of fact, when the trailer was open, you, you had a crew of people swarming on it. Yeah. And I can't help myself. I have moved freights for so long. I started to grab a piece of freight and help and Emily says, Craig, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> my people yeah. need to handle this. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not full of glass. That's yeah. scary. Yeah. Just, just have a seat, Craig, and watch. Yeah. That, that was an amazing exhibition. Um, you know, it was something that had been in conversation for a while. We just needed the right space. Uh, Alice Walton, our founder and then board chair, um, has a relationship with the Chihulis, which is um, long standing. And, and they had discussed, you know, when and how can we make this partnership um, come to fruition here at Crystal Bridges. And we had just uh, planned and completed a North Forest Sculpture Trail, which is a, at the time was about a mile. Now we've doubled that loop, but about a mile of paved trail all along a very 
rough and unmanicured north forest. Natural plantings, um, you know, if you've been to the Ozarks, if you're from the Ozarks, you know how dense the forest is. We did a lot of clearing out to, to take away the invasive species. It is just this magical place. And to have opened that space and that outdoor gallery with an exhibition of Dale Chihuly's works, it was uh, for me, it's been a career highlight. A career now, there are two career. permanent pieces there, are there? Uh, more than that, we, we have six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think there's one, two, three, four on display right now. Uh -huh. So we, that exhibition was so hugely popular. We had works on display inside our galleries as well as out along the forest trail. Um, we invited uh, the public and our members to vote on their favorite, mm -hmm. and we were going to buy their favorite. Um, at the end of the day, they were all our favorites. We, we <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just not all you hadn't had the had expansion yet, so you couldn't take it all, right? So. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but we did buy the, the five at the time, yeah. and I think we have another. Yeah, Neon that. works in the uh, focus show about light right now, and Julie's as well. Right. Yeah, I mean, that was our first big outdoor show. Mm -hmm. And well, really, we learned a lot. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not an uncommon for you guys to use your outdoor walking trails as a canvas for display. Not many, at all. many works, and, but it did boggle the mind a little bit that these extremely fragile glass works were out there. Yeah, knowing I was what wondering that myself. In Arkansas. Uh, yeah, hail, mature tornado, trees everywhere. Yeah. Trees. Limbs. Uh, yeah, no, we did inspect all of the trees around it to ensure there weren't any like obvious damaged or mm -hmm. sick trees that would pose a threat. Um, we removed anything that that might have been an immediate threat. We actually, though, through the run of that show, didn't didn't have any issues. No. I think we had one glow, one, one glow broke. on a pond broke, and we're not. Maybe it was heat. It was a cold night, yeah. really hot day. We think maybe there was just some heat, cold temperature changes that occurred there. But really, that was it's it. It's pretty durable, mm -hmm. shiny. It's quite mm -hmm. yeah. It's a thick glass. And and Craig, to your point, we do activate our trails. In fact, we found that more and more visitors from especially more of our um, regular in town regular locals and then a lot of families from um, English second language households you know our, our Hispanic and Indian populations our local Marshallese populations being outside with their families is a big part of a weekly tradition and ritual within their families and enjoying nature and so we were finding so many families uh, from all these different cultures were enjoying our trails and not necessarily at the time feeling comfortable also coming inside yeah. art museums have a lot of and stereotypes that we have to break down to ensure we are welcoming to all. We are here for you. We have art for all. You know, we are an inclusive space, but you have to first recognize the museum is for you to make the choice to go into the museum. Yeah. Right. And so we recognize all of these amazing cultures are represented in the families walking our trails, especially on the weekends, Sunday evenings. Uh, so if we put more art out on the trails for just the public to enjoy on their evening walks, the hope is they become more familiar with art, more comfortable with viewing art. It's a big something that sparks their interest, and they're yeah. like, well, maybe we will go inside and check it out. Yeah, and yeah. then hopefully when they come inside, they see our, bil our um, bilingual labels, and they recognize, oh, we have all these amazing public programs for everybody, all ages, you know, but that, that biggest barrier is just coming in that very first time. And so activating our trails is a huge way. My family's have, been yeah. on the Northwest Arkansas bike trail before and just made the museum a pit stop. Because yeah. you have to go in and you, you can you can be in your biking gear yeah. and just park it and walk in. And oh, yeah. It's all welcoming. It's yeah. what sets Crystal Bridges apart. I mean, if you think about across the country, I mean, I meet people and work with people all over the globe and they say, oh, Crystal Bridges, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's about that. It's that there's this boundarylessness and it just it permeates kind of, uh, to me, I mean, I'm an Arkansan and it just feels like what it reminds me of home, of this idea that you can be outside and there's it's not stuffy, you can just kind of walk inside and be a part of something pretty amazing. We had an event at the Momentary, which is our new contemporary arts space satellite um, building. We've renovated an old Crafts Cheese plant and there's galleries and a cool swinky bar, the Tower Bar. And oh, my green. son loves that Isn't place. It great? Uh, <laughs> but we had an event where <laughs> there was, there's something for families out outside of the momentary, beautiful day. So we loaded up our bikes and our six-year-old and uh, 
headed to Bentonville and had lunch at the Momentary and then rode our bike to Crystal Bridges um, and enjoyed the family day there. There was a family day with our activities and our six-year-old just eats all that up. Uh, and of course, then the challenge was, okay, now we've made all this amazing art and um, how are we going to get this home. back to the Momentary? <laughs> because we now have to ride back up there. Uh, but we managed. Uh, but those are just, it's an amazing amenity. And it, 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 again, yeah, we were there in the museum. I'm in my bike shorts, my helmet tennis shoes yeah and that's fine no big deal mm -hmm. come on in yeah the momentary actually uh, started and opened with nick cave's amazing piece um that we commissioned and Aries freight uh mm -hmm. helped with that project and was that, that piece that was mostly suspended from the ceiling mm -hmm. yeah yeah that exhibition was throughout all of the galleries of the momentary the momentary is very different architecture experience yeah. than crystal bridges it's very rough it's an old factory, concrete. Not precious. Yeah. But <laughs> it awesome. allows these unique um, spaces in which to hang giant objects. And so in one of his works, you ascend it up to, from a ladder down below, to observe mm -hmm. uh, the entire work from below and from above. You know, we always think of Airways Freight when we're shipping the unusual. Uh, the weird, um, the the challenging uh, things that that it, it may be a standard uh, art shipper who is used to yeah. trucks that are accommodating paintings might not be able to accommodate the all of the very contemporary sculpture structural. Oh my gosh! Airways yeah. Freight is an awesome partner for that. Yeah, I mean it's so weird. You ask artists and you commission artists to like challenge something, do something new, things we've never even done before. Mm -hmm. And like with this architecture show, that's the scariest thing is, I've just seen drawings, you know? And mm -hmm. so we're, we're really all working and I mean, it's a huge, massive team and a major project. And so there's a lot of trust of like, kind of our, our team, Charles talking to your team and saying like, hey, this is what we know. It's these big panels or it's this random different shapes. And um, no one else would be able to like jump in and say, okay, we're willing to experiment and, and try something different. And Charles and I have uh, exchanged many, uh, Charles is a registrar. Yeah. Yeah. We've exchanged many emails back and forth where we're just brainstorming about the best way to get something <laughs> yeah. done because sometimes he's at the mercy of what information he's given without proper dimensions mm -hmm. or handling information because he's not there with the work. Um, for example, just last week we moved something that was overdimensional and when he sent some pictures of it, you can't wrap your mind around exactly what this end product is going to look like. It's a bunch of metal racks made in this tangent kind of a uh, angular form where the wider it gets, the more it spills over the side of the truck and the more you've got to get permits and escorts to move this because it's not within DOT regulations to hmm. move down the road. And, uh, but we, he, uh, he contacted me just a few days ago saying, finally, it's all done, it's all here, so we're ready to set up. So you guys are in the setup mode right now. Is that correct, or is it ready to go? It is not ready to go. The rain was rough for us for, for a couple of weeks here. Yeah. For so those of people who aren't local, we got torrential down yes. about a week ago. Yes. At, on yeah. The and so, I mean, that's the, the challenge of having an outdoor gallery, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, uh, we're building concrete foundations, but right now, uh, a lot of our architects are in town right now, actually, uh, doing the final setups. And we'll be finished, if everything goes as planned, the first week in June, and then do landscaping right up to opening on the 11th. Um, and so it's tight, but um, <laughs> hey, we're all we've are, we're all going for it and jumped in. And um, it's so funny to hear all these stories because you know, I hear an update from Charles and it's like, it's here or everything's okay. Um, but I don't hear like what happens to it. And I think actually our public would find it to be so fascinating about how things get there and the process of making it. And that if, if we don't have someone that can help us realize these architects or artists' visions to physically get it there, we can't show it, you know, we can't have it. Yeah, to houses. see it alone is one thing, but to think this was transported yeah. from an artist's studio to this spot. And sometimes it's in different components and assembled, but still, some of these components are really interesting to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, I know historically throughout the years, we've done everything for you guys from flatbed, to double drop, sometimes climate control shipments, a little bit of everything, and all kinds of different handling requirements, temperature requirements, dimension requirements. So it, it's, we hope that we do the gamut for you and do it well. 
Yeah, I think one of my fondest memories, Craig, is coming to you with the challenge of shipping out some giant quartz crystal from a mine in central western Arkansas off the windy Highway 7 mm -hmm. back in the boonies mm -hmm. and you're thinking, okay, what truck is going to get back in there? <laughs> I think you call the crystal boulders, I think is what you mean, which is, I, I got to go take a Airways sent me to take a look at them to see what we were up against, and that's exactly what they were. <laughs> little holders. Yeah, yeah. don't take a small little thing you can hold no. your hand. <laughs> giants, giants. But they're beautiful, and, and some are installed along our trails now. So it's really the, the three pillars of Crystal Bridges, art, architecture, and nature, intersect in so many ways. And so we were approached by um, the gentleman who manages those mines and said, you know, hey, Arkansas creates some amazing, beautiful natural art. Mm -hmm. Is there a home for this at Crystal Bridges? And so if they've had a home along our trails and guests, especially if they're not from our region, it's a way for them to learn a little bit more about the geography of Arkansas and our natural resources, why we're called the natural state. Um, and they're gorgeous. And there's one inside that we call the Holy Grail. And it really is absolutely stunning. It's huge, it's probably taller than I am, heavy and delicate and fragile. And it was, it arrived without a single chip mm -hmm. or challenge. And it's just amazing to think that Earth creates such beautiful art, but uh, it does. And it's wonderful that we have that on view next to man-made art as well, so. Yeah, I, I learned something with that though, because we had a crystal show, so inspired by this. And it, anyway, one of the curators, he was an outside curator that did it, and I was working with him, and um, Catherine the Great in Russia, actually, in her, the crown jewels of Russia, had quartz from Arkansas. Really? Yeah, really? they had sent explorers here in like the 1790s and to find and mine, and anyways, that's just was so shocking to me to think about a resource from Arkansas being in this like royal collection in Russia. Um, now, Dylan, this podcast stays simpler than that. <laughs> no, no history lessons, please. No, I had heard that uh, Central Arkansas, with its quartz mines, is a, a lot of semiconductor equipment and different things used for the quartz, but just the sheer beauty of them and just for the artistic value of them. Like you said, you walk the trail at Crystal Bridges and you see nature and art mixed together so if anyone who hasn't done that yet highly encouraged to go walk the trails any course coming up you've got even more to see this spring color field is another prime example of an exhibit that is primarily set up outside with just something something to see around every corner it seemed like i remember the giant wind chimes <laughs> that we shift which basically people who were there to as spectators were encouraged to just go up and whack on it, you know, make a sound. <laughs> and uh, the artist said, hey, that's fine. When it's done, I'll just repaint it. We'll make it like new again. Yeah, the color field was great. And it, it started at Crystal Bridges and has traveled since to other museums, Florida and another state. Uh, and they're always great there with us all along the way, both getting it to Crystal Bridges and then taking it out to share with the world. And our first uh, exhibition where we curated our own exhibition and then shared out with the world was State of the Art 2014 and Airways Freight was our official shipper of that exhibition and we brought in art from contemporary artists from all over the country. Yeah. We had 50, well just about 50 artists mm -hmm. from every region of the U.S. Everything from tiny delicate teacups to giant pinata. <laughs> Car. Cars <laughs> and everything in between, and Airways Freight was a phenomenal partner in shipping that. And then, once it closed at Crystal Bridges, we then shared that out with museums in Minneapolis and Georgia and Nashville. And Airways Freight got all of the different moving parts to all of the different locations, always on time and always in one piece. Um, so really, it's amazing, and we just, we continued that with State of the Art 2020. Uh, we had our second version of the State of the Art exhibition and Airways Freight was there with us again. Yeah, and it changed everything. I think about something Alice said, like Crystal Bridges in that show can be a super highway for emerging artists and contemporary art. I think that's pun intended kind of here, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's like literally how can we pull people together and look at art from everywhere and then share it out. Um, and be a, a good resource for that. And state of the art, I mean, it's one of our like biggest identities, I think, of who we are. 
and you know, super highway for artists. Exactly. Airways freight's super on the highway. <laughs> we're going to use that in marketing. <laughs> There's something there. Just found out we're going to be doing a summit in the fall of 2023, so it'll be up through that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's. I have to tell you, I'm a big dreamer, <laughs> and so <laughs> I started with like a pretty big challenge, and the museum was like, okay, we can do this. And you know, this exhibition is unlike anything else. At the time when we open it, there's not going to be another architecture exhibit in an American institution like this. You know, and so we're trying to challenge how museums work with architecture, and and really think about getting away from just looking at models, but can we actually bring buildings here? And that was the biggest challenge, is can we like actually have something you can walk through? Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to, we learned something when we uh, opened the Frank Lloyd Wright House, which is when people can walk in somewhere that's familiar, like a home and see a chair or see windows, it's relatable. Like they can instantly relate to chairs they've sat in, houses they've been in. Mm -hmm. And so it breaks down again, continues to break down these barriers. So you're interacting with it. Exactly. You're forced to, right? Mm -hmm. Like. The way it's part of the experience. you have to move, it tells you what to do. Um, and so that's what's going to happen here is you'll, you'll literally get to hang out in these spaces that are experimental and weird and challenge kind of um, our perceptions of things. Um, and it was scary and still is because, like I said, it's not open yet. Uh, so I'm like <laughs> watching it as it goes and going out there every day and making sure everything's going well. But um, I have to say I'm really impressed. I'm, I'm, Unbelievably excited. What is the wooden structure that's going to be out towards the entrance that when we ship a portion of it, it looked like custom made trusses on a flat bed, but I think it has some effect when you walk around and it takes a different look. I'm going to touch on that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so when you look at the front, it's like these two kind of volumes, these two rooms with this courtyard in the middle. Um, but when you look at the front, it looks like the roof is made up of a series of curved beams but it's all straight lines. And um, it's because of the shifting geometry. So uh, the right wall is tall on one side and short on the other, but they raise and lower so that it creates this kind of undulating roof system. And the neatest thing is all of that wood, we can trace two specific trees from El Dorado, Arkansas, and it had this whole journey of only using Arkansas products. And that the, the firm's out of New York, and they said to us, we want to be local, and we we're like, okay. And they said, no, we want to be really local. <laughs> like we're not using anything that's not from Arkansas. Everyone, that are shippers, people are fabricating it. Where the wood came from, it's all here. And and I think that's such a neat story to show awesome. what our state can produce and, and how we can. We have the resources here to to change how people live. What is the name of that work? It, yeah, the, the name of the work is called House of Trees. Um, and uh, it's by Levin Betts, it's the architectural firm. All of the architects are integrating light into their work, so nighttime in the summer, walking the trails after dinner, you'll be able to go and they'll have a completely different identity at night because of all of these installations with them. Cool. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty interesting. And um, actually, all those beams that you guys moved were a new innovative technology that uh, was the first time Arkansas the first time in the country that that type of technology was being used and it's happening in Arkansas. The other place it was was in Canada and they just opened a facility here. So anyway, pretty interesting. I'm so excited. This will be a free exhibition. Yeah. There's no charge. It is outside on our trails. It is open all hours. Yeah. And I don't know when this podcast will air, but we'll have on June 10th public program. It'll all, be before then. Okay. Well, all the firms, uh, this is breaking news uh we just learned <laughs> all the architects will be in town and we're going to do a really cool public program in the great hall um where you can get tickets and, and come and enjoy so if you want to hear from the firms that's june 10th through fall of 2023 mm -hmm. when we're planning a summit yeah can talk a little bit about that summit yeah so what we wanted to kind of do is understand that this is just the beginning of a conversation for us and so we're here to kind of pose these questions of how do people live and how can we evolve housing so the summit we want to bring in, obviously the firms, but artists and writers and a really wide range of people, policy makers, uh, people who build houses, shocker, you need to talk to those people too, um, to actually come up with
with action steps. Like, how can we move this forward, inspired by this exhibition, and do something in the future, maybe on our grounds or maybe with the community partners that we're working with? Um, and so that summit is really going to be a coming together to say, okay, this is what we learned. Now, what can we do? How can we change it? How can we really make people's lives better and give more people beautiful places to live? Housing is one of those things that hasn't really, you wouldn't say evolved. I right. mean, if you think of a house when you were a kid or when even your parents were kids, it's a house is a house. Maybe the floor plans are different, decor is different, building materials are about the same. Um, yeah, I, the purpose of them and the functionality of them is about the same. So when we walk the trailer, we're gonna see some pretty interesting things. Oh yeah. <laughs> that, that it could be considered housing of the future or completely vision of housing yeah i mean we're going to see untraditional shapes weird materials one of the pieces that you moved from mexico city uh, it, he's innovating with this material this material has never been used this way before um and uh he said i think we can do this they did an experimentation and mock-up and it worked um, and so his idea is that literally you can take his design and scale it up. You want to have a four bedroom house, you can use this system and it'll build out um, and you can live in them. Um, so yeah, you're going to see some things just like, I don't know, I think about how technology's changed or cars have evolved in the last hundred years. Housing hasn't, like you said, and, and we have new ways of thinking and that's what you'll see when you're on the grounds. And I think that's too, that's the unique lens through which you can view these really important social issues all through art yeah. and that, that creative lens. It brings a different perspective. You know, we can create these spaces for convening in, in ways that only art museums can do. I think, you know, I'll be celebrating nine years at Crystal Bridges this summer and I am always um, in awe of just how many ways you can view your own world through art. Uh, and I think Crystal Bridges, our leadership has done an amazing job to push the envelope and say, well, what more can an art museum be in a community? How do we get out beyond our walls? How do we remain relevant today, tomorrow, 100 years from now? Um, and you know, you can't do that only looking back. You have to constantly um, be working in the present and looking ahead. And those, those conversations can be big and can be scary and can be divisive, but when you think of them through the lens of art, and creation and innovation, suddenly you're bringing people together in brand new ways. And I love that Crystal Bridges is at the forefront of that. Me too. I mean, it's, I was lucky. I was giving a tour the other day and I haven't been at the galleries in a while. And it just, for me, it's like this grounding thing. You know, it pulls me back and reminds me of beauty and like, hey, you can get off your email for a little bit. Yeah. It's gonna calm yeah. down. You're okay. You're a human being. Um, and I think that we all need that reminder. Mm -hmm. um, and that building to me has this really beautiful pace of being able to just remind you of other things going on in the world and, and in your own life. Yeah, we found that during the pandemic, it, that- I missed it during the pandemic. I was gonna say, yeah, people, we were closed for around three months and reopened very quickly. In fact, I think we were the first or second mm -hmm. art museum to reopen in the country and we did so with limited capacity all of the health and safety measures in place to protect staff and to protect our volunteers and our guests uh, but we found that we were a needed space yes. we were one of the few indoor places people could gather safely and distance from one another and they found that or we found that guests came with very different motivations during the height of the pandemic yes to see art but more importantly to be with each other um, and to be out in a space that they could escape right. from the pressures of what we were experiencing. They found beauty, inspiration, they could recharge. There was a mental health and emotional well-being component to those visits, especially 2020 and 20, early 2021. Um, that was just heightened in a way we, we know has always been there, but it really put a fine point on, yeah, on the role that art museums also play in the communities well-being. Mm -hmm. What about the Navarro Water Towers? Oh. Uh, he does this amazing kind of uh, stack where he, he does a two-way mirror essentially. Mm -hmm. So there's a mirror on the inside but then you're looking through a one-way mirror and then there's neon and so it creates this over ever repeating like ladder for example or circular experience. I mean he really revolutionized that idea. The very first thing it was like a door. 
And so it was a doorway that just kept going forever. And these water towers were a part of a series because on the outside, they look like old school water and towers. You walk underneath and yep. take a look up. And then you look up <laughs> and it looks like you're into a whole new world. You're looking through a tunnel. It just mm-hmm. goes on forever. Yeah, he's one of my favorite artists. Um, so those are inside the museum. They're outside. Uh, are they part of anything permanent or are they just part of a display? Right? Long-term installations. Yes. Because... I don't know. Yeah, the momentary yeah. doesn't collect. Yeah, the momentary doesn't have its own collection, okay. but it does move art through. But these outdoor installations, just given the nature of them and the resources it took to install, yeah. they're long-term installations. They will eventually move on, but they're with us for a while. Yeah, outdoor stuff's really tough. You know, I mean, it has to deal with touching and animals yes. and weather and yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, I mean, so it's it's really tough to think through all of the logistics of that. Yeah. I remember we were installing this work in the North Forest, and um, we were kind of talking about putting it in one place. And Clay, who's our director of trails and grounds, goes, "I don't know. That's a main path of deer that might break through here. So we sh- probably shouldn't put that right mm-hmm. there because then it'll block uh, this deer. And the nature of the work was kind of this mesh thing, and so we were worried about it, and so it moved. <laughs> so you have to like when you're outside, you have to think about." That as well. Do you yeah. want this trampled on by deer today? Exactly. <laughs> right, that's what I was thinking. We actually have this large deer sculpture yeah. in yes. the North Forest, and my favorite times are when live deer kind of walk, meander underneath it, this giant, you know, larger than life, and they're munching on the grass and yeah. the heels of their, <laughs> you know, art and nature mm-hmm. meet in those moments. Well, Airways has had a great relationship with Crystal Bridges since we said 2014 been a sponsor and a carrier and very proud to be involved with everything you guys guys have going on so hopefully I, i'm sure it's mutually beneficial we know it is but Absolutely. hopefully that will go on for years to come so we're extremely excited to continue it and be involved in the next project what's next on the horizon after this we have a fashion exhibition opening um it's in september in september and then um we have also opening this summer, and oh, right. it's, uh, we have several, six actually, uh, significant historic documents um, coming to Crystal Bridges. They are original print copies of the U.S. Constitution, the proposed Bill of Rights, so an earlier draft of the Bill of Rights uh, before it was finally um, completed. Uh, Emancipation Proclamation and 13th Amendment, both signed by Abraham Lincoln and the Articles of Confederation. And those are going to be paired with historical works from our collection as well as contemporary art, also loans from other institutions, and they will open July 4th weekend and be on view for six months. Great. So if you come to see architecture at home, Plan ahead, reserve your free ticket. There will be no cost to see the exhibition. It's called We the People, the Radical Notion of Democracy. And it's a celebration and a conversation around uh, these documents, their significance then, their significance now, uh, and how art can be a way that we view ourselves uh, and view history um, in new ways. So we're really excited. And these documents have not been gathered together in one in spot. In this way, yeah. in one spot, in this part of the country, it's truly unprecedented. Wow. Uh, so that's happening. We haven't, mm-hmm. we'll have announced by the time this podcast airs. <laughs> um, but it's, it's really remarkable that these lenders have trusted us with these documents. They're, of course, highly light sensitive and a lot of consideration around touching and, and working with these documents to install them in the galleries. But um, they trust us. We have a reputation. We know we know we can keep them. They expect a lot of field trips, right? Yeah, oh, a lot yeah. of field trips. We think our, our hope is that we'll actually be able to extend some of our hours to allow for more school groups to come through. We have an amazing school tour program, K through 12, public, private schools, all over the state, but also Oklahoma, Missouri, Kansas, Texas, Louisiana, Tennessee, uh, they come to Crystal Bridges for a free school tour experience. And so Architecture Home will be part Mm -hmm. of that experience. uh, And they have an awesome experience. These kids, you know, I grew up here, and so my first time at a major art museum would have been as a senior in high school, and I went to New York City. Uh, But a lot of these kids now, they come, hopefully, annually with their school, 
uh, but they come often and I just can't even imagine the impact and experience has on these children now and forever. We've measured that impact. We know that um, with the University of Arkansas's research team, that one museum visit as part of the school experience for a child increases their ability to retain historical facts, uh, it increases their historical empathy and their ability to relate to the past and the figures they learn about in their lessons. Uh, it increases their interest in art and culture and continue to be active in art and culture. Uh, and then those same impacts are doubled for children who uh, may be from a community that's underrepresented or underserved. So uh, maybe they have a family that's English second language, second generation immigrant family, um, or of a lower economic status, and that impact for them is actually double. And we have measured that now. We know, we've always known art's good. Now we, we can prove art is good. Mm -hmm. So when you think about, you have architecture at home, or this fashion exhibition we'll have this fall, or the We the People, um, the, the document exhibition, just the doors it opens for young people and adults alike when they have that access and that's what we're about. We're a free museum. Uh, there's no charge to come and see the art in our galleries. Uh, many of our programs are free or they're low cost. Um, some exhibitions do have a small ticket fee. Architecture Home will not and the We the People, the Radical Notion of Democracy will not, which is awesome. So greatest access possible for everybody. We're just, we can't wait. It's been yeah. a big year. Come and see us. Yeah, we'll yeah, we will. Everywhere. Everybody, we, go to Crystal Bridges yeah, and the Momentary. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to maybe put something social media wise on our Facebook page or something. I'd like to get a, a collage going of different pictures of different things that we've shipped. For you That's guys. a good idea. Yeah. 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 It'd be an interesting, interesting visual. Gosh, um, so much. Speaking of social media, though, what's the best way for people to get updates and timing and dates? For Crystal Bridges, yeah, even our website, page or anything? crystalbridges.org has uh, all the latest only exhibitions. Of course, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Momentary as yep. well, Twitter. So we have, you know, we're everywhere. Mm -hmm. You want to be. Tag us. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll also put a link on ours to yours. Awesome. Oh, great. Awesome. Uh, it's a, you know, we are not slowing down. We're. That, that word doesn't exist. <laughs> ambitious leadership, ambitious impact, and I think we see the results of that yeah. in this community especially. Yeah, I mean, we literally couldn't do it without not only our team, but all of the partners, all the people like you that really make it possible. It's, uh, it takes a village to open the doors to allow everybody to have access to it, so we're super appreciative. Thank you. Yeah. We're a 501c3 nonprofit, so the help that Airways Freight provides with um, helping us reduce our shipping costs, which can sometimes be a barrier yes, to a lot of our institutions. Shipping yeah. can be among their highest um, yes. expense line. Especially recently. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so having help with that really enables us to continue to kind of go full throttle on our ambitions and bringing amazing art here to mm -hmm. Northwest Arkansas. Well, we're excited and thrilled yeah. with our relationship and know it'll go on for years to come. So. We thank you guys for being here. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. We yeah. encourage everybody to go out and visit and check the social media sites to check the dates and, and be a part of it. Go uh, go see it firsthand. Walk the trails. See the exhibits. Get involved. Yes. Come see us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This is brought to you by Airways Freight, where we're delivering more than performance. And if you want to learn more about Airways Freight, feel free to visit our website at www.airwaysfreight.com. Or you can check us out on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also catch our podcast on Spotify or YouTube. Be safe and thanks for listening. Bye.